head is towards heaven. Are you ready for the word of God? Say, I'm born of God. Say it louder. Say, I'm born of God. I'm born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore, tonight, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. And at the end of the service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same. In Jesus' name. And every believer shout a thunderous amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord and celebrate the Lord with a shout. Glory! You may be seated in the heavenlies with your sweet, smart self. Let's get into the word of God tonight. How many of you are excited? Just say, I'm ready for the word. Come on, louder. Say, I'm ready for the word of God. Louder, scream it loud like you love it. Say, I'm ready for the word of God. Those of you on Facebook, type, I'm ready for the word of God. Hallelujah. We started a series in this month of October. We started our In Christ series. How many of you were blessed last week, Friday? It was awesome. It was powerful. It was mind-blowing. Hallelujah. Also, we, we continue in our series. We started In Christ Realities, part two. In Christ Realities. In Christ, Apostle Paul's revelation of identification. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. Because while you think I'm starting, I might actually be finishing. <laughs> in Christ reality, it's good to see everybody here tonight. Apostle Paul's revelation of identification. Let's look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. St. Matthew's gospel, chapter number 16, verse number 16. I love the word of God. I don't know about you. I love the word of God. It's sweet. Are you there? Say, uh-huh, uh-huh. And Simon Peter said unto him, Thou art the Christ. Someone say the Christ. Louder say the Christ. Simon said unto him, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That word Christ is the Greek word Christus. That word Christ is the Greek word Christus, which means the anointed one and his anointing. Thou art the anointed one. So when Peter said this to Jesus, he is implying that Jesus is the first man that will ever be anointed of God. When Peter said this to Jesus, he is implying to Jesus that Jesus is the first man that will ever be anointed of God. Circle that word anointed or thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So the anointed one is the son of the living God. I wish I was here. The anointed one and his anointing is the son of the living God. That means he is the one who carries God or the one who reveals God. The anointed one is the one who owns God, the one who, who brings forth the personality of God or God made in flesh. Thou art the anointed one. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, blessed art thou, Simon son of Jonah, flesh and blood had not revealed it unto you but my father which is in heaven so the revelation of the christ the revelation of the christ is the glory of the father are you still here the revelation of the christ is the glory of the father flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you so man has no ability to reveal who the Christ is. In order for you to know who the anointed one is, the father has to unveil it to you. So it is the father that unveils the son. The father is the one who reveals the son. And the son is the anointed. Are you here? Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. 
And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Upon this rock I will build my church. So the church of God is built upon the revelation of the Christ. The church of God is not built upon the revelation of motivation. The church of God is not built upon, upon the revelation of prosperity. The church of God is not built upon the laws of Moses. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. The church of God is built upon the revelation of the Christ. That is when the Father unveils the Christ to you. The church is built. So upon this rock, this rock is not a stone. This rock is the revelation. The rock is the revelation from the Father. Upon this revelation, I will establish my ecclesia. My ecclesia, my called out ones, will be established upon the revelation of the Christ. That is why you can never know God until you know the Christ. That is why we are taking time to establish Christ, the concept of the word Christ. Because upon this revelation shall the church of God be built. And watch this next line. And the gates, the gates of hell shall not prevail. The gate of hell cannot prevail over a man that has caught the revelation of the Christ. Hell represents death. That means the day Christ is unveiled to your spirit, you have escaped death. The day Christ is unveiled to your soul, you have escaped death. The day Christ is unveiled to your body, you have escaped sickness and all its consequences. The revelation of Christ is what puts an end to the advancement of hell. Clap if you want to clap. Upon this rock, somebody say this rock. This rock is the revelation. The revelation of Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. The revelation of the Christ. Look at the next line, the next verse. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I will give you I will give you the keys. Not a key. The keys. I will give to you the keys of the basilia of heaven. The word kingdom there means basilia in the Greek. It means the throne of heaven. The royal palace of heaven. That is where God's throne is. By the revelation of the Christ, you have access to that throne. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> By the revelation of the Son of God, who is the Christ, you have access to the throne of God. Come boldly to the throne of grace. To the throne of grace. We don't come timid, we come bold. We have access to the throne. We have access to the throne. I will give you the keys by the revelation of the anointed one. You will have the keys of the royal palace of heaven. Watch this. And whatsoever thou shall bind on earth. Hey, Zika, tell us. With that key, you can bind. Your ability to bind on earth is based on the dimensions of the revelation of the Christ that is unveiled to your human spirit. The dimension of the anointing you see upon the person of Jesus the Christ is the flow to which, the proportion to which you will exercise dominion on earth. I will give you that key to the throne room of God and when you stay in that throne room, you can bind anything on earth and it will be bound in heaven. Ay, 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 ay. So you can, that word bind means to disallow. 
It means to disallow. If you disallow sickness, it's disallowed in heaven. If you disallow lack, it's disallowed in heaven. If you disallow death, it's disallowed in heaven. Whatever you disallow because of this key in your hand. Somebody say, I got the key. Lord, I say, I got the key. Because of this key in your hand, you can disallow whatever you choose to disallow. Yeah, you have the right. Because why? You have access to the kingdom of heaven. To the basilial, the throne room, the royal palace of heaven. You have the key. The key is in your hand. The key is not in God's hand. Jiko Tula Bahaya. Huh. And whatsoever thou shall lose, thou shall lose on earth, it shall be loosed in heaven. So earth controls heaven. Heaven does not control earth. Huh, someone didn't get that. Earth controls heaven. Heaven does not control earth. Whatever you bind on earth, whatever you lose on earth. So the authority is given to you while you are still a man. So we are establishing the word Christ because Christ means man. An anointed man. We are establishing his humanity. We are establishing the humanity of Christ. For him to be Christ, he has to be a man. Anointed. And this will be the first man anointed of God. I don't mean men anointed by men. You know men anointed by men? They wear collar. That's men anointed by men. I'm talking about men anointed, a man anointed by God. This is the only man. That is why he is Christ. Anointed one. It's gotten from the root word in the Greek, cryo. Cryo means to anoint. Are you still here? Are you still here? So let's look at Luke chapter 24, verse 25. What will Christ do on earth? What was the entire mission of the Christ? We further established that Christ is a man. The entire revelation of God is found in a man. All of God can be seen in Christ. The entire revelation of God is found in a man. That is, to know God, stop looking at the moon and the stars. Stop looking at the stars. Oh, wonderful. You're going to be a stargazer. Wow, look at the stars. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Don't worry. If I give you a slap, you will really see stars. A slap can make you see stars. Then sings my soul. Why is your soul singing because you saw a star? People in the occult use stars. People in the occult use stars. They use stars. Yeah. Astrology. They use stars. So why will a believer say the revelation of God is found in stars? How can the revelation of God be found in a moon? Found in a planet somewhere? You're looking at the waters and say, wow, that, that's not God. The revelation of God is not in elements. It's not in thunders and lightnings. The revelation of God is found in a man. That is to know God, you must look at a man. That man is Jesus. God cannot be found. Or expressed outside a man. Not in elements. Luke 24 verse 25. Then he said unto them. O fools and slow of heart. To believe all that the prophet has spoken. O anointos and brados. To believe all the prophet has spoken. Next verse. All the prophet has spoken. Now look at the next verse. Ought not Christ 
Ought not Christ. Are you seeing Christ? Ought not Christ, the man. Ought not Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? God cannot suffer. Man can suffer. So in order for God to suffer for man, he has to become a man. In order for God to suffer for man, he has to become a man. Full man. Full man, just like you and I. An ordinary man, just like you and I. He is just like you. Nothing special about him. The only difference is how he came into this world. But the moment his mother pushed him out, he was just a man. Full man. Christ will suffer and enter into his glory. So having established that Jesus Christ is a man. Have we established that? Jesus Christ is a man. So if Jesus Christ is a man, that means he has a spirit, a soul, and a body. If he's a man, it means he has a spirit, a soul, and a body. And in order to be a man on the earth, you have to be born of a woman. The moment he was born of a woman, that means he's a man. Ordinary man. But in order for Jesus to become the Christ, he has to be anointed. Jesus was not born anointed. You know how people say, in my mother's womb, God anointed me. Calm down. You are not anointed in your mother's womb. In your mother's womb, you were just sperm and egg. Oh, anointed. <laughs> shut, shut up. <laughs> anointed. Even Jesus in his mother's womb was not anointed. He was a man. Now, let's look at the word anointed. Are you still here? <laughs> we need to further establish this. Let's look at the word anointed. The word anointed is used 69 times in the Old Testament. And it's used to describe the spirit of the Lord that was to come upon the Christ. It is used to describe the spirit of the Lord that was to come upon the Christ. That is why Moses, the first instructor, pay attention. Moses, the first instructor. Moses gave the people a parable of that anointing. Moses said to them, you will bring your sons from the tribe of Levi and we will pour oil on them and anoint them into the priestly office, which is a type of the office of the Christ. Christ is our high priest. So Moses was actually showing them a parable. When Moses said, get olive oil and pour on their head. It was a typology of the Holy Spirit. Moses was using oil as a typology of the Spirit upon the great high priest, Christ Jesus. So Moses gave them that typology. Oil is not the Spirit, but oil is a typology. Are you here? So the word anoint, anointing or anointed was used 69 times in the Old Testament. And it was used to describe the spirit of the Lord that was to come upon the person of the Christ. And that word anointed in the Hebrew is the word memshak. Say with me memshak. Say with me memshak. It means to paint a surface or to smear or to add something that was not there it means to paint a surface to smear or to add something that originally was not there it wasn't there before that means when christ jesus was born he was ordinary without the spirit he was just a man without the spirit so a day came that he was anointed and we are going to look at that day that came he was anointed the day he became Christ 
anointed one. This one is the one we were typifying. This one is the one we saw in shadows. This one is the one we use David as a typology. This one is the one that we foreshadowed. This one, a day came, he was smeared with the oil of God. The real oil, the Holy Spirit. Are you still here? Are you still here? Now, let's look at these words. Let's look, look, let's look at this very quickly. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. I love this. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Peter said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. This Jesus comes from Nazareth. A man. Jesus, the man, was anointed of God. He was Christ. The word anointed is the Greek word Christian. Christian. From the root word cryo. To smear. To add on his surface. How God anointed Jesus. So the one who anointed Jesus was God. <laughs> the one who anointed Jesus was God. So there was a day the man Jesus was anointed. When he was anointed, that's when he became Christ. Anointed one. <laughs> now look at the materials. He was anointed with. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost. Hey. He was not anointed with olive oil. Hmm. The real oil came upon him. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost. The uniqueness of his anointing was the Holy Ghost. And watch this. And with power. That word and is not a conjunction. It's a description. That is power. That is dunamis. The power of God left the throne room and enveloped itself for the first time in a man. Hmm. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is the power of God. So for the first time, the power of God found expression in a man. So God's intention was not his power, was not that his power will, will be expressed through thunders and lightnings and earthquakes and, 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 and uh, hurricanes. No, his expression of power will be in a man. That is why when we walk, the power of God is walking. When we talk, the power of God is talking. When we enter a place, we enter with the power of God. When disease look at us, demons flee, disease flee. When we enter a place where witches, warlocks, or occultic powers operate, we exercise the power of God. For I have not come to you with mentizing words of man's wisdom, but with the demonstration of the power of God. Somebody shout, I demonstrate the power louder shout i demonstrate the power lift your hands and shout yes yes, yes we demonstrate the power. demonstrate the power the power of god yeah. and with power <laughs> and he went about doing good and healing so the power of god does not destroy the power of God heals. That word good is the word philanthropy. He went about exercising philanthropic acts. He was the greatest philanthropist by the anointing. And healing. You see when people say, oh the power of God kills. No, the power of God does not kill. The power of God heals. He heals. All that were oppressed of the devil. He was healing all that were oppressed of the devil. What did he use to tackle the oppression of the devil? Look at that. It was the power of God. What's the power of God? 
For God, for God was with him. Are you still here? So God was with him is an expression that he is the carrier of God. He is a carrier of God. Are you still here? Arabahos kitana mahanda. Help me. Take it out. Thank you, Lord. Just lower it down. Zika talavri his Luke chapter 3, verse 22. Luke chapter 3, verse 22. Luke 3, verse 22. We want to further establish how Jesus was anointed. So if we say Jesus was anointed, that means there was a day he was anointed. This establishes he was a man. 100% man. And 100% God. But before he became 100% God, I want to show you how he became 100% God. That anointing is what makes him 100% God. Ten tropos. God, man. But before the God came into him, he was a man. And the Holy Ghost descended upon him. The Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. The Holy Ghost descended. Now, that word descended is the Greek word katabino. That word descended is the Greek word katabino. Katabino means to literally descend. It literally, not in a vision. It's not in the spirit. It literally lighting came down, descended. Katabino, to literally descend. In a bodily shape. Not in a spiritual shape. In a bodily shape. That word bodily is the Greek word somaticos. Somaticos means in physical form. John the Baptist saw the spirit in a physical form. The spirit came down physically. Not in a vision. Came and amalgamated itself with the Christ. Came and united itself with the one that he was with from the beginning. David said, my Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. The one that vanished out of him and entered the womb of a woman and became an ordinary man. Now the one that was still left had to live where he was and identify with the humanity of the one who left him in the spirit. And for him to come, he didn't come in spirit. He came bodily. He came bodily. Sumaticus came as a physical being and lighting itself upon him. Identification. Identified with his humanity. Sumaticus. Bodily. Bodily. And a voice came from heaven. A voice came. Now watch this. Pay attention. The spirit is a voice. The spirit of God is a voice. Jesus is the word. The spirit is a voice. That word and is the Greek word kaya. That is a voice. So what John the Baptist saw in physical form was the voice of the Lord. <laughs> the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord breaketh even the cedar in Lebanon. The voice. For the word to find expression, it needs a voice. <laughs> Are you here? No word can find expression without a voice. Jesus is the Logos, the written word, the Logos, the scripture made flesh. 
So the writing needs a voice. <laughs> Are you still here? When in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Logos means written word. So the writing needs a voice to give it expression. He was just the scriptures of the prophets written in black and white in a bodily form. But no writing can read itself. A voice needs to give life. A voice needs to give life. And a voice, that is a voice. That word voice is the Greek word phone. Sound. Articulation. Phone, where we get the word phonetics. Phone, a voice, a sound from heaven. So the spirit is a voice. The word, every word needs a voice. The reason why you can hear my words is because of my phone my voice so the word could not do anything without the voice the voice is the spirit how do i further establish this genesis chapter 3 verse 8 genesis chapter 3 verse 8 are you blessed tonight Allah <laughs> and they heard a voice they heard the voice of the lord <laughs> Not the word of the Lord. The voice of the Lord walking. The voice had legs. That's why the voice came in bodily form. <laughs> if you are intelligent and prophetic enough, you will catch it. You will see him. You will touch him. You will feel him. He's a man. He's a person. He is moved by your infirmity. The voice is a man. The voice took on legs and was walking. The voice. The voice was walking in the garden at the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. So the voice of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is the person of the Lord or the glory of the Lord or the spirit of the Lord. The voice had legs and was walking physical form. So that voice, that spirit that descended, the spirit is not a dove, but it descended like the way a dove descends, literal descent. If you were there, you could touch it. If you were there, you could touch the head of Jesus and see him and touch the person of the Holy Ghost. Literal. Physical form, bodily bodily and a voice and a voice and a voice and a voice so the voice is the spirit <laughs> are you still here the voice is the spirit the voice said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased you see that word, well pleased, makes you think that God looked at Jesus and said, wow, I'm happy with you. You've done so well. That is not what it means in the Greek. That word shape is the Greek word eudo. U-E-U-D-O. Eudo. Eudo means a form. Bodily form. And we can see the same word you do expressed in pleased. Well pleased is you do kisa. You do kisa. That Jesus, the son, the beloved son, the agape to heals, is the you do kisa. Is the one who gives form to God. Well pleased is the one who gives God full expression. The one 
who expresses the true character of God in the sight of men if you want to know how God thinks how God behaves the beloved son is the form the Yudokisa the one who gives expression to the eternal God the one who gives expression to that voice Jesus, that was the day Jesus became the Christ. That was the day Jesus was anointed of God. That was the day the heavens inaugurated a man the heavens inaugurated a man and said from today the expression of the divine will be found amongst mankind Emmanuel God with us the heavens inaugurated him as as the corporate headquarters of God in bodily form. Hayash. That if you want to find God, you must find God in a man. In a man. I know God for myself. Quiet. You don't know God nothing. You submit to no authority. You listen to no man. And you say you know God for yourself. You know nothing. You know nothing. You just know, even yourself, you don't even know. Because God is revealed in a man. So that word anointed is unique to Christ alone. Ah, I'm causing trouble in, 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 in this Christianity. Don't you know I'm an anointed man of God? No, you are not. So that if you are saying anointed, you are saying you are Christ. Because it's the Greek word Christos. Don't you know, if you were in Greece, you would say it like this. Don't you know, I am Christos, man of God. I got people, are you Christ? Because anointed means Christos. Christ. After you got born again, there was no day you were anointed. As a matter of fact, the church of Jesus, the epistles of Paul and Peter never taught us that we are anointed after we get born again. <laughs> you, the epistles never teach that after you are born again, you are anointed. Because the typology of oil ended with Christ. The reality has come. The man that God has chosen to find his full expression is him. The only thing you do is you become one with the anointed. But you are not the anointed. Touch not mine anointed. They even touch the anointed. Who are you? The anointed one and his anointing was touched. He was slapped. They beat him up. Who are you? Even all the prophets of the Old Testament, they were persecuted. So persecuted they, the prophets. They were persecuted. They were killed. They were beheaded. Who are you? Jesus said, persecution will arise for the word's sake. If they have hated me, they will hate you also. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I've overcome the world. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The greater one is the anointed. The anointed in you. Christ in you. The anointed one and his anointing in you is the hope of glory. Ought not Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory. So the anointing is in you. You are not the anointed. Are you here? We need to establish that so that we don't walk in the mires of ignorance. Christ is the anointed. 
So when you go about say, I'm anointed, I'm anointed. We have anointed musician, anointed, anointed players. Anoint what are, what are no you are not, sir. Are you Christ? We only have one Christ. And if you say you're anointed, you're a false Christ. Matthew 24. Many false anointed. Christ means anointed. Many false Christos. Many false anointed will arise. There are so, so many false anointed. We are not false prophets and false anointed. And that's why Jesus has been taken off the center of the church. Jesus is no longer the church because the man on the pulpit is the anointed. Christ has left the church. Christ has left the church. That's why the man is the anointed one. So where is Jesus? That's why you don't hear Jesus in their teaching. Because the man is the anointed. Sending people to hell. In heresies. Jesus is no longer seen. Where is Jesus? The one who died. The one who suffered. That man, has he suffered for you? What can he suffer for you? He can't even suffer for his own wife. Even his own kids he has not finished suffering for. And you take Christ out. Build empires for themselves. Christ is no longer the focus. The anointed one is Jesus. And Jesus alone. We have come to strip any man naked. And give all the glory to Jesus Christ alone. We don't care what you've built over the years. We will strip you naked in this decade. And give Jesus the glory alone. So Christ is the anointed one. We are still establishing. So that when we enter brother Paul's revelation of in Christ. You will now know why you identify with him. Are you still here? You will now know what? Why? You identified with him. Quickly as we begin to round up. Are you blessed tonight? I want to show you somewhere in the scriptures. Further establishes Jesus as anointed. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Are you blessed tonight? Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. <laughs> because he hath anointed me. Remember we just read Luke chapter 3 verse 22. That was the anointing service. <laughs> so the man from Nazareth was anointed. That was the anointing service. The Holy Ghost came somaticus, bodily form. Descended, katabino, literal descent. The spirit is upon me. Now Jesus could take the scriptures of the prophets for the first time and give it word, echo, voice. The scriptures came alive by the voice. <laughs> Now he entered into the synagogue in Nazareth. Went back to Nazareth after Luke chapter 3. After the anointing service. <laughs> then opened the scriptures and began to read Isaiah 61 verse 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon, descended upon him, is upon me because he hath anointed me. Because he hath anointed me. <laughs> he hath anointed me. To do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. So deliverance is a preaching. It's not an exorcism. Deliverance is a preaching. It's not an exorcism to preach deliverance. And the deliverer is Jesus. When we preach Jesus, deliverance happens. To preach
preach deliverance to the captive. Preach. And recovering of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. Huh. Next verse. Hilamandas. To preach. To preach. To preach. To preach. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. <laughs> this is the acceptable year of the Lord in your life. Somebody shout amen. amen. Next verse. Next verse. And he closed the book and gave it to the minister and sat down. And all the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fasting upon him. Look at the next verse. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. <laughs> before now, before my anointing service, that scripture was not fulfilled. But the day I was dead, the scripture came alive. <laughs> this day is this scripture fulfilled. The prophets foretold, the prophets spoke about the Christus. The Amashia, the one who carries the Mamshak, the one who will be anointed. And today, that anointing service that was foretold has happened. And I have come to tell you, I am He. <laughs> I am He. I am He. I am He. So we are establishing that Christ is the anointed one. That is why he's a man. Because when we start Brother Paul's revelation of identification, you will know why you and him have merged to become one. You've been melted into him. You no longer exist of your own. You are no longer yourself. You've been amalgamated into the Christ. You've been swallowed up by that anointing. So we established that the anointed one who is Christ will suffer. The anointed one who is Christ will suffer. And after his suffering will enter into his glory. So how did he suffer? Matthew chapter 27 verse 26. The anointed one came primarily to suffer. To suffer the man that is anointed. Matthew 27 verse 26. Ayada da discus. Are you there? Thank you Lord Jesus. Zikanana mandele bro shida la bande skila bro skita. Then released he Barabbas unto them and when he had scored Jesus he delivered him to be crucified. Let's look at the next verse. Vilaramash. Let's look at the next verse. Next verse. That's not the scripture I'm looking for. But let's, let's look at Psalms 22 verse 1. Where Jesus said on the cross, Eloi, Eloi, laba sabachthani. Okay, that's the scripture I'm looking for. Psalms 22 verse 1. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? When Jesus was on the cross, Jesus echoed these words. Corey, they look for that scripture for me. Where he said, my God, my God. When Jesus was on the cross, Jesus echoed these words. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? My God, my God. That was the day the person of God departed from the anointed. Remember, when Jesus was anointed, he became God man. God man. Theanthropos in the Greek. God man. But on the cross, when he cried out, Eloi, Eloi, Laba Sabachthani. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, Laba Sabachthani. 
that is to say my god my god why have thou forsaken me he was also echoing the scriptures of the prophet david david had foretold the words of the christ on the cross but david thought he was just going through affliction but in the affliction of david when david cried out the unaware to david david received the spirit of christ upon him and he echoed the words of christ beforehand so in your affliction is the presence of the lord if you go through the fire it will not overshadow you yet though i go through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me he is in the situation with you and he will turn around the situation with you lift up your hands and shout hallelujah he's right there he's right there somebody say he's right there Lord, I say he's right there. So this was when the Christ was abandoned of God. The anointing left him. He died an ordinary man. You can't kill an anointed. That's why he says, touch not my anointed. But your lovely anointed people die. So are they anointed? Mm. how can you kill a man that has God the, a man that is God you can't kill that man that's why Jesus said I lay down my life on the third day I will pick it up so on the cross God the presence of God the person of God departed from the Christ and he became an ordinary man now he has to die the Christ has to die identification so that he takes your place your place of death the soul that sin it it shall die so now god will leave the god man and he will become an ordinary man he that knew no sin became sin he became sin on that cross he became sin the lord departed from him and left him to his fate. He died a man. He died a natural man. He suffered. He died. And as a man, he went to hell. Because God cannot go to hell. That's why God had to leave him. That's why God had to leave him. So he died a man. Ought not Christ to suffer. He died your death so that you will live his life he had a bahaya he became sickness so that you can become health he took your place so that you can take his glory somebody shout hallelujah identification he identified with you took on your responsibility on himself and died your death yeah christ the man god left him and as a man went to hell and let me tell you jesus and satan was not having a wrestling match in hell like preachers tell you and jesus went there and satan was there and he went to satan and said oh give me the keys i say give me the keys and he took the keys from the devil i said satan give me the keys no 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 there was no match satan is not even in hell he's walking through and through the earth it's not in hell the souls of men are in hell we'll do an exegesis on understanding hell and the lake of fire one of these days he went there a man and suffered in hell he suffered separation from god for the first time the anointed one is left as a man in the dungeons of hell not for what he did but for what you did not for what he did but for what you did you deserve death you deserved hell but he went there so that you don't go there. 
So that your children don't go there. So that your family don't go there. He went there. And do you know as a man. He remembered the scriptures. <laughs> Let me tell you how Jesus rose. Jesus didn't just rise. On that resurrection morning. Just whoo, spooky, spooky, spooky like that. No, no. <laughs> In hell. He was speaking the scriptures. He took those words with him in death. Huh. On the cross, he spoke the word. In your situation, speak the word. As you keep speaking the word, the situation will bow. No situation is strong enough to contest the dynamism of the word. I'm telling you. Not when you go through a little situation, you are so weak and so you're looking for wood to help you. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Take the words of God, put it in your mouth and speak to every storm, speak to every pain, speak to every disease. Yeah. He took those words. Even in the place of pain, took the words of the prophets. He wasn't speaking his words. Oh, wow. Look at my life. No, don't speak your own words. Speak the word. He was full of the word. Let the words of Christ dwell richly in you in all wisdom. On the cross, he spoke the word. When he went to hell, he spoke the same word of the prophet David. Thou shalt not allow my soul to remain in hell, nor allow thy holy one see corruption. He was in hell. He was speaking the word. He kept proclaiming it. I'm not going to stay here. The prophet spoke. I will rise on the third day. I will not die in nobody. I will become a somebody. Am I talking to somebody here? This sickness will not kill me. I am here. He was Speaking the word in season and out of season. But Lido Bosa, on the third day, those words from cloud. When the cloud is cloudy, then the rain shall descend. Ladies and gentlemen, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Somebody lift your hands and shout, yes. Lift your hands and shout, yes. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. He took those words and began to speak the word. He was speaking the word. He was speaking the word. Thou shalt not allow my soul to remain in hell, nor allow thy holy one see corruption. My body will not decay. I will rise. 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 He kept speaking the word. Oh day when the word had filled the atmosphere the spirit came and the spirit moved upon the face of the deep the spirit moved upon the face of the darkness and God said let there be light instantly resurrection took place resurrection took place resurrection took place he took the words of the prophets. He took the words of the scriptures. Let the word of Christ dwell. Let it dwell. Let it reside in your innermost being. Come to a point where you know that word. Deep down in your subconscious. Yes. When he began speaking the word from the cross to the grave. Even in the grave, he spoke the word. And the blood of Abel yet speaketh. The blood of Abel could speak from death. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not everybody dies without speaking. Abel's blood spoke in death. Jesus' blood speaks in death. Uh, for the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. So we were told Abel's blood spoke. A dead man yet speaking. Yes. That's the same life we carry on the resurrection morning. That's the same life 
you have when you put that word in your mouth and declare over every situation the situation bows rise to your feet rise to your feet put your hands together for the lord Put your hands together for the Lord. Those of you on Facebook, hit the love button quickly. Those of you on Facebook, hit the love button. Hit the love button. Those of you on Facebook, celebrate the Lord. Those of you on Facebook, hit the love button. Go quickly, quickly, quickly. Hit the love button. Lift up your hands. Say, I am. Loud as I am. The righteousness of God. Lord, I say from today, I exercise the authority of Christ. From today, I exercise the dominion of Christ. From today, I exercise the power of Christ. I am not an ordinary man. Lord, I say I'm not an ordinary man. Say I am the custodian of the Holy Ghost. Say I am the custodian custodian of the power of God. Clap your hand and break that prayer. Clap your hand and pray. Come on somebody clap those hands and pray. I exercise the dominion of Christ. I exercise the power of Christ. I exercise the glory of Christ. I will never be afflicted another day of my life. I will never be bound. I will never be bound. I will never be disappointed. Somebody pray, somebody pray. Exercise your dominion. Exercise your authority in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hiromonga Tanaman Santanamahe. Igoloboko Sikatala Tilaha. Hirobo Satanamama Makola. Hira Satanama Sakate. Sickness has no hold over me. Disease has no hold over me. Affliction has no hold over me. Satan has lost his grip. Satan has lost his grip. Satan has lost his grip. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Oh no no more. She can on a man de his. Irabo Santana Mama Mama Mabasha. El Arabo Cosida Rabababas. Hirana Mama Mamas. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Help me, man of God. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. I want to show you something. Because that's the same thing that is going to happen in this house tonight. I feel a baptism of the Spirit coming upon you. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Look at the next verse. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. That word sound is the word phone, the voice. For nay, the same voice, the same voice that echoed when Christ was anointed, that same voice as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Look at the next verse. And they appeared unto them. They appeared unto them. There is going to be an appearance tonight. They appeared unto them, cloven tongues like a fire, and it sat upon each of them. How many of you are ready to receive that cloven tongue of fire tonight? Lift up your hands towards heaven. Cloven tongues of fire, cloven tongues of fire, cloven tongues of fire is changing your status, it's changing your health. He's changing your finance. He's changing your career. He's changing your business. Hirabo Sandala Bahaya. There is about to be an appearance. There's going to be an appearance tonight. There's going to be an appearance tonight. Lift up your hands. It's going to rest on you. Oh, I feel it. It's going to rest on you. It's going to rest on you. At the count of seven. Sweet Spirit of Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, descend. Fill this room, fill this house, fill this temple. Somebody, are you ready for an infilling of the Holy Ghost? Are you ready? Focus on the spirit, focus on the spirit. At the count of seven, and descend upon them, rest on them, 